Hey guys, I am Bianca Octavia and I am here with Plaid today to show you guys how to use their new folk art dots paint and their wooden mandala surfaces. So we will go ahead and we will jump right into this project. I did this at home already and I had a lot of fun with this you guys. This was actually very therapeutic and relaxing. It's something that you do not have to think about. You really don't need any type of skill or crafting expert level or anything like that. It's something easy that I think everybody could do and I think you'll really enjoy this. So, in front of me, I have our wooden plaque here with this really fun design. And I have some paints that I already picked out. I really enjoy soft colors. Um, those are all of the colors that are in my studio and in my home. So I picked these out, but of course we have all of these other fun colors over here to my right side. I'll go through them at the end so that I can tell you some of the names if you want to go in the store and pick them out yourself or even order them online and have them shipped to you. But these are the ones that I picked out for myself. So we'll go ahead and we will get started, you guys. This is very fun and it's actually very, very easy. And like I said, it's pretty relaxing. I always love to turn on a show or a movie when I'm crafting just to kind of get myself in the zone. And this is definitely one of those things that you can do that with. So I think I want to start with my favorite color, which is pink. If you have been on a live with me here before, I'm sure you know already that I use pink a lot. So we're going to go ahead and start with pink nectar rose. This is really, really pretty. So. I'm not gonna think about it too much. I'm gonna follow the design that they already already have here for us. Um, and I think I'll start on the outer edge. So we'll start with our first dot. Bam, that is number one, guys. So this is really easy. You do not need a paintbrush. Like I said, you do not need any type of crafting skill level. Super easy. And if you just squeeze one tiny dot, that is it. Super easy. And so what you don't want to do is squeeze your bottle a lot because then, of course, a lot will come out. You only need one tiny, tiny squirt. And it perfectly fills in your bubble. And I'll kind of show you guys the trick that I found that was really helpful when we get to the bigger circles. But just a small, quick and simple squeeze for your smaller dots and it just goes on perfectly. So we are actually getting through this much more quickly than I did at home. I guess I had to try it out first. <laughs> now it seems like I'm an expert. Now Bianca, would you mind holding up the surface when you get to a good stopping point oh, so we yeah, can get a close-up view? Let's do that right now. So I love this design. This one is called the Lotus. And I think the other one over here to the right of me actually has a different name. So if you hold it up with the oh, black okay. facing and then you can look in the there monitor, you can go. see. Okay. Yeah, wow, look at that. Yes, guys, this is the Lotus. This is really, 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 really pretty. And then I'll tell you guys the name of the other one when we finish with this one if you want to try a different design at home. So this is our Lotus design. It's really pretty, it's really, really detailed, and when it's fully filled in, it's absolutely beautiful. So, hope everyone got a good view there. We're good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and fill it in some more. All right, we'll go back in with our pink. And we'll keep going around our edges here. If anybody is there and watching, I always love to hear where everyone is from. And so Curtis has a question on YouTube. Okay. They were asking, how do you keep your bottles clean? How do you keep your bottles clean? So when I was done with this project at home, I definitely went around the tips of my bottles with a warm rag because I didn't want them to get clogged. And I also cleaned out the caps as well because I believe the caps kind of snap into the holes that are at the top of our tips here. And I didn't want any excess paint to, from the tip of the top of the cap to go into the bottle. So I just used a warm rag, yeah. I always like to wipe my bottles down after I finish painting. And Robin says they're from Tennessee. Ooh, Tennessee. That's not too far from where we are, guys. So you're probably just as hot as I am today. 
Yes, Georgia is going through a heat wave. We are definitely going through a heat wave. But I would rather that than cold. So I'm okay with it. All right. So once we finish going around our edges here, we will go back in with a different color. Whenever I do things like this, I really like to try to color block because this is such a detailed pattern, I think it looks really nice and really uniformed when you keep all of your colors in a certain area. So I think I just wanna do pink all the way around. And then we'll go in maybe with some white afterwards. I always feel like white makes any of these dot projects pop. I agree. And what's great about this particular formula is that it dries to a satin finish, and when you paint yes. it on top of a flat black, it really has such a beautiful contrast. It really, really does. I don't know if you guys have seen it already, but the ones over to my right, I hung them up in my studio, and they look so beautiful. And she's definitely right. I love that white color. It definitely pops. I saw it all the way from across the room. It was really, really beautiful. So you can get this white, uh, I believe it's Whisper White, in either the six-piece kit that is in front of Bianca, or you can buy it individually on platonline.com. Ooh. I love it. Okay. This is actually going pretty quickly. So let's bring this up just a little more so you guys can see. I'm going to go ahead and turn it around. You can kind of already see it coming to life. And I really love the black background. I definitely feel, feel like that makes all of the colors pop. All right, there we go. And I was thinking about what this could be used as when you finish. I thought about it being a serving tray because I noticed that once all the paint dried, it dried kind of flat. And if you really wanted to, you could maybe even lay some um, wax paper over it or some clear contact paper and kind of cover it tightly. And you could use it as a serving platter, a charcuterie board. And I brought some rope with me and a staple gun. And I was gonna show you guys how you could also turn it into some hanging art too. So you can use this in multiple ways. If you guys can think of anything creative that you could do with this, let us know in the comments. So Martha says that she thinks it's, it's so pretty with the black background. She loves all the colors. I agree, yes. I would love to see what colors you guys choose at home when you do this. I love to see what patterns you come up with and which design you choose. I know we have the other one over here to my left side, it's a little more rounded. And like I said, I'll grab that name for you. So Billy is asking if you used a transfer pattern. Oh. So for these specific um, surfaces, mm -hmm. they're available on platonline.com and they're already pre-patterned yeah. out. So you don't have to use a transfer pattern. However, this is a really great way that you can create your own designs or use something that you find online and you wanna be able to recreate. Yes. You can absolutely do, th do that as well. I 100% agree with that. That was a great question. So um, Lisa is asking if this is a, it's good for a food safe platter, but as Bianca was mentioning, she said that you would want to put down like a doily or you want to right. have some uh, thing as a barrier for food. Yep. However, this is um, top rack dishwasher safe if you cure it and the instructions are on the side of the bottle. Perfect. And um, if you want to do like a mug or a ceramic or something like that, you just have to leave about a one inch rim around your um, drinking glass right. and then that would be perfectly fine. Perfect, great tip, thank you. So I'm gonna go ahead and, well no, let's, let's do our white guys. So this is, like Emily said, Whisper White. We'll go ahead and jump in here with a little bit of that. So I think I wanna do our next line of dots in white. So let's start there and just squeeze a little bit. So like I said earlier, you don't need a lot, just a quick squeeze. And even though it doesn't look like a lot, 
it's enough if you kind of just swirl it around just a little bit. So this is what I found to be the easiest way to fill in the dots for the bigger ones. So Martha tuned in again and she said this would be a beautiful way to paint a jewelry box. Ooh, I agree, Martha. That would be absolutely beautiful. It's a fun way to adorn things that adorn you. I agree. Maybe you could even spell out someone's name. So that's another great feature that you bring up, Bianca. You can also use this as a script writer mm -hmm. and you can write love wow. or create or pretty or something you could put your last name or your initials and put that on a jewelry box as well. I love that idea. I'll have to try that. That was a great idea. Keep coming with the ideas, you guys. I love that one. I have to think of some other projects. Let's see. Yeah, I can definitely see you using this for that because the tip makes it so easy to write out and to draw certain things. It's almost like using a pencil. Okay, so that white is really bold and really pretty. I love it. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn this around and finish up this corner here. There we go. Has anyone done anything similar to this before? If you have, let me know. I'd love to hear what you made. Like I said, you just kind of want to squirt just a little bit out and kind of swirl it around into those bigger circles to fill them in. I would not suggest using more paint than you did on the smaller ones, just simply swirling around the same amount of paint just to kind of spread it out. So Cindy was wondering, why did you choose to start on the outside? Um, that is a great question. I think my brain just wanted to start on the outside. I think for me, it makes more sense to work your way in, but I also think it would definitely make sense to work your way out as well. So it's more of a personal preference? Yeah, more of a personal preference. Um, that's how I did it at home. I feel like for me, it uh, it's the beginning of the pattern to me because I don't really have anything in mind as far as how I want the colors to go, but starting from the outside makes me think about what would look nicer next going in towards it. And this is a very relaxing craft. This yeah. is not something that you have to overly think. Nope. It's very simple. You very can kind of just relax and just put your dots on the canvas. Yep. And really it's an exciting experience because you get to see where that time took you. Yep. And I think this is a really great project for people who think that they are not creative because your pattern is already here for you. You don't have to think about it. And when you're done, you look and see this beautiful and cool creation that you created. And it might even lead you into wanting to do other projects. So I think this is very, very good for people who are just starting out and want to learn how to paint. Although I am very crafty, crafty and creative, one thing that I am not the best at is painting, like painting people or painting things. So this made me feel like I really did something great when I was finished. So um, Joe is asking about how do you control the amount of paint that's coming out and preventing it from going outside of the designated pattern? So it's really just about how much pressure you're applying when you're squeezing the bottle. So I am squeezing this very lightly. It's almost like I'm not squeezing it at all. And I'll probably do some test squeezes over here when I switch out from the white. We'll try it with another color so you can see it against the paper here what I mean about how much pressure you're applying. So I'm just doing just a little bit. So just something, bit. when I've worked with this product mm -hmm. before, and if I had an area where maybe too much paint came out mm -hmm. or I wasn't satisfied with mm -hmm. it, it's always great to have like Q-tip or yep. baby wipes handy because yep. it's pretty forgiving when it comes to clean up and you can just wipe a little bit away. Yep. With a Q-tip, you can have a lot of control on where you're picking the paint back up. And this surface, um, though it is matte, it is very flat and almost somewhat slick. So 
if you needed to wipe something off of it, it's not going to have any resistance. So it's not like the paint Absolutely. is going to go into cracks because there's literally no cracks there on these no surfaces. Cracks. Yes. So I definitely use Q-tips for mine. Whenever I did squeeze out a little bit too much and the Q-tips worked great. Q-tips worked absolutely great. That is a great tip. I even found myself using a needle at one point for like a very fine line. I didn't want to use a Q-tip because I knew that it might move a little bit more paint than I wanted to. So I just grabbed a sewing needle just kind of to manipulate my circle just a little bit and that kind of helped as well. But if you do mess up, just like Emily said, you can definitely use a baby wipe and just wipe it off and start over. It's very forgiving. It's almost like a chalkboard, but a little bit better than a chalkboard. Right, so Billy is asking about how you can find these items on platonline.com. Okay. And this is called Folk Art Dots. So there is a link in the description for this video where you can go directly to the search page. And then you can also um, find them in a link that I put in the comments. And then this also is a multi-surface indoor-outdoor formula. Mm. So you can paint it on terracotta, ceramics, wood, nice. um, you can put it on metal, you can put it on a rocks, you can put it on a variety of surfaces. And again, it's dishwasher, uh, top rack safe, as long as you follow the curing instructions on the side of the bottle. Yeah, I definitely cannot wait to make some mugs with this, to design some really nice mugs with this. I feel like this would be really fun to decorate your dorm for going into oh, school. How nice would that be? Yeah, you could do wedding gifts, you could Ooh, do centerpieces, gifts. you could do um, fun things for your table center. You know, you know what I mean? There's just so many options that you can do with this formula. I know we are nowhere near that time, but I think this would be a really cool table runner for Thanksgiving. Oh, that's yeah. cute. I think that would be really, really nice. What I like to do around Thanksgiving time, I always love to get really creative with my table decor and table settings for all of my guests. And I like to come up with really cool ways to do like the name settings. So I think this is a product that you could use to get really creative with your place settings for each person's name and maybe even create it into something that they can take home with them. So we have a lot of people really excited about trying this on rock painting. Um, so yeah, I guess we've got some people who love putting it into their gardens. You could pair a rock with maybe a flower pot or even a watering can. I think that those are fun ideas. Yeah. Um, and they, somebody said even a laptop lid. I think that oh, that would wow. be fun. Yeah. That would be really, really cool. That's definitely a great back to school project or for anyone that's just working. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, Bianca's gonna have dots all over her craft <laughs> room. Yeah, I really had fun with this at home and I really honestly and truly cannot wait to get home later and finish off my last one. I think I'm gonna turn on like two good shows and just kind of zone out. And I think she's right. I probably will have dots just everywhere. <laughs> Sometime by the end of the next two weeks because this was really, really fun. Okay. And the bottles go a long way too. They do because you actually don't need a lot of paint for your dots that are here on the board. Like I said, guys, I'm barely squeezing this. Um, I don't even think this bottle is. So it's two ounces, yeah. it comes in the bottle and you barely use a fraction per yeah. project. And I think this is my third board and this bottle has barely moved. So this is great. So, all right, I think I wanna start with purple next. Let's see, the name of this color is Hushed Violet. I love this color. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna do, let's see, we'll go ahead and do the next line of dots. We will go around the bigger circles that are in the middle of it here. And another thing that I noticed when using this, so if you squeeze, just lightly and just kind of bring it up instead of going out that will stop your paint from coming across the board so you don't want to pull it when you're done you want to pull it up so don't pull it out pull it up i'm going to do a view of that from front on so people okay. can kind of see what it is when you put a dot okay. on and then you can pull it up all right 
so and you just kind of want to go up and you'll see the little string attached to your paint bubble but that is okay it will detach so that is how you are able to do it neatly all right so norma is asking how many colors there are in this line and Norma, there are 20 different colors in the folk art dot line, and then we also have a six piece kit. So if you wanna go on to platonline.com and look up folk art dot, you can buy them individually in a variety of bright and bold colors. We've got neutrals, we've got pastels like Bianca's using here. And if you want to get a set, so you can try out a couple of different ones. Yeah. We have a six piece set that comes with a couple blues, a red, a yellow, a green, and a white. So that's another really great option if you're interested in that. So um, yeah, there's so many colors to choose from. You know what this might even look nice on as well? If you did like a canvas tote bag. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Really, a tote really bag nice. would be great. Um, and there was somebody even saying that they love the idea of doing for Thanksgiving and having the table the runner. Table runner yeah. And they also said that you could get just really inexpensive placemats at like the dollar mm -hmm. store. And then you could put this on there and have it adorned on your table for the holidays. Yep, I think that would be beautiful, guys. And I know I'm thinking ahead here. I know we're in summer, but... <laughs> Even for Christmas, I like to get creative with my gift wrappings. I never just do wrapping paper. I think it would be really nice to personalize your boxes with this paint and put people's names on there. You could do designs. gift tags. You could Ooh. even do that for um, birthdays. Yep. Um, you could do that for a variety of holidays. I think that this is really great because you can do the dots in conjunction with using it as a script point. Yep. Um, and you could put their name or, you yep. know, have something really special that you can keep. I agree. That would be really beautiful. All right, so we have four more points to go with our purple. So let's start with this one. You can kind of see it's coming together here. This almost looks like the stepping stones that you can buy for outside. It does with the a jewels little bit. In it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what this kind of looks like. It's really starting to pop. It looks really nice on camera. Oh, for summer, this would be great to decorate your outdoor patio. Yep. You could put um, this in a variety of ways. You could have stuff hanging on, uh, you know, your back door, yep. or you could have um, cute little placemats outside on your table. Oh, how cute would that be? You could put it on a flower vase. Yeah, definitely a flower vase. Definitely a flower vase. And then those terracotta pots again. Perfect for this time of year. And what I really love about it, actually what I love about most of all of Platt's paints is how quickly they dry. So that's one thing that we haven't really talked about this um, yeah. practice, is that what you can do is you can do your first layer of dots, mm -hmm. allow that to dry, mm -hmm. and then you can go back and you can layer the dots. Yep. So then you can add a whole nother dimension to your mandala oh, wow. art. Wow, how beautiful would that be? I love that. Oh, we have our request for some blue next. Ooh, okay. I like the color request. So I'll let you guys tell me what to do. Oh, interactive. <laughs> so you guys tell me what to do next. So we will go in with the blue and I'll show you the two different blue options that we have here. Billy, you got to get ready. You got to decide which blue <laughs> Bianca's going to choose. So let's see. We have breezy blue and I'll show it to you here. So this one is a little bit lighter. It's kind of like an aqua. And then we have the babbling brook here this is more like a turquoise so you get to choose which one we'll be doing next and then you can even tell me where you want me to do it at so i have one more section for our hushed violet and then we will go in with the blue that you choose all right but once you do a few dots it becomes easier and easier you kind of get your flow like I said, you just want to squeeze and pull up with your bigger ones. Again, like I said, just kind of want to swirl your paint around just a little bit, not a lot. 
and done. So Billy came back with the babbling brook. Ooh, okay. All right, so we will get started with our babbling brook. If there is a section that you would like me to start on, I definitely can, or I can just get started wherever. So I will give you about five seconds to let us know. There is a little bit of a delay. Okay. So I'm going to start here. In the meantime, if there's another place, you can let us know. So I actually decided to come back out on the outside. And I think these are the smallest dots that I've done so far. So for this, I'm not even squeezing the bottle right now. I'm just kind of letting the excess paint that's on the tip just kind of cover these dots right here. And here you can really see how you're yeah. flicking your wrist up to be able to um, yep. keep that from yep. pulling like you were talking about before. Yep, so I'll just show you. So I'm just tapping, guys. I'm not even squeezing right now. I might need to squeeze just a little bit out. So I'm gonna squeeze some over here just to get enough on the tip. Because I think if I squeeze it onto the board, it might be a little bit too much for this size right here. So we got just enough just to tap, 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 tap. I really like this color. This is really nice. All right. If somebody else has a, another color request, we can use that one next. We do have somebody saying that you're missing one dot on one of your um, oh, purple sections. Where, guys? Oh, I see it. <laughs> you guys are good. Yeah, they're they're watching you with a keen eye. Okay, so I will have to go back and grab that one. You are definitely right. I definitely looked that one over. Well, with so many dots on here, yeah, I think sometimes it's, so <laughs> it's okay. We'll give you a little bit of grace. Okay, yeah, so many dots. I didn't even notice that. And it's a big one too. Okay. So yeah, everyone is different. I think some people would probably start from the outside. I think the way my brain works, it just wanted to start from the outside, guys. And work its way in. Okay, so we have three more of these to go. And this is going pretty quickly because I'm not even squeezing anything. I'm just kind of tapping. All right. One, three. All right. And then we got two more to go, guys. Martha said, you were talking about the next color to use, so it was easy to miss one, I'm sure. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. I was excited about the blue. <laughs> but we'll do that one once we finish this one. We only have one more to go. All right. It's so pretty already. All righty. So someone was saying before you finish up with your blue, you could put the blue in the larger circles okay. in between the, see where the lavender is, that little blue. Between the lavender? Uh -huh. Okay. Let's grab this. Well, let's grab the purple back really quickly, the violet here, and let's fill in that one, which is right here. There we go. Thank you, Martha. I believe that was Martha that told us about this yes. one. Thank you, I Martha. actually see a second one, too. You do? I do. It's on. Oh, I see it. You see it? There you go. Yeah, guys, it's so many dots. It's definitely easy to kind of look over some of them. Okay, I think that's all of them now. Okay, so we will go ahead and do the larger ones like you guys suggested. So let's do that here. All right. And we'll just kind of swirl this around. There we go. There we go. All right. We'll do this one over here. Again, not a lot, just a little. Just swirl it. And one thing that people might not be able to tell from at home mm -hmm. is that you squeeze a little in the center, mm -hmm. and then you're not squeezing the whole time. You, you're moving the paint yep. around that you 
originally yep. put down the, in the center and just yep. moving it with the tip. You're, yep. you're not squeezing. Nope, I am not squeezing the entire time. I am squeezing right there in the middle and then once it's in the middle, I'm just swirling it around. And that's the beauty of this pre-existing pattern is it really keeps you symmetrical yep. and, and in line. Like you know just how big you need to make the circle, yep. you know where the circle needs to go, and you're just worrying about nothing. You, you literally, you are relaxing yep. and just dotting away. Yeah, it's almost like a 3D coloring book, I think. So I believe um, Martha's asking what color this is, and it's Babbling Brook. Yep, this one is Babbling Brook. This is our darker blue out of the two that we're using right now. So we have three more of these to go. And then if there is another color request, we can take that one. I have the, let's see, uh-oh. I have the grassy meadow, which is kind of this lime green color here, if anyone wants to use that one next. And then I have the breezy blue that I have not used yet. The other colors we have used, but I'm definitely going to go back in with them at some point. But again, those were the pink nectar. And then we have the whisper white. So if we have any color requests after that, and then I have colors over here to my right as well that I can use if you guys would like to see them. I can kind of give you a few of those names in just a second here if you think any of those would look nice with the colors that we are using. So Kelly was saying that a Lazy Susan might be good to do for Ooh. this task. Oh, you guys are really good. Well, when you get a bunch of crafters in <laughs> one place on the social web, They'll give you all fun sorts that of ideas. That is a great suggestion. Wow. That would make life a lot easier. So She's Tamara is uh, just tuning in and they Hi, were Tamara. wondering, yeah, uh, they were wondering how um, did you get the circles on the surface? But do you want to talk a little bit about the surface that you're using? Yeah, so guys, this pattern already comes on the surface. You do not have to transfer this. You don't have to draw it out. It already comes like this, which I said earlier, it makes it really easy for anyone who is just starting out crafting. Even if you are an expert crafter, it's always easy to just have a little bit of help in some areas. So this pattern already comes on your wooden surface. It can easily be wiped off. Like Emily said earlier, there are no cracks. So if you need to clean it off, it's very forgiving. It won't look messy or sloppy. It'll actually just go right back to being clean and black. So that is our surface here. And then like I mentioned earlier, if you already weren't tuned in, I'll kind of show you what I did at home to turn this into hanging art. It's very lightweight, so I was able to hang this up with a thumbtack and some rope, and it was just really cute hanging up in my studio. So again, this is the design for this surface. I'll show you this one over here. I believe this is the other one. Yes, it is. And the name on this one is the traditional mandala. So this is the traditional one, which is really, really pretty. I love the colors that I use on this one. And then this is, uh -oh, this is the lotus mandala. So you guys can kind of see the difference there. But they are both wooden. Yep, and they're both available on plaidonline.com. And the link for that, for at least one of those, is in yeah. the comment section. And if you go there, you'll be able to find the second. All right. We have a vote for green. Ooh, green. Okay. So I always like to use green as like the center of things because it's almost like a flower to me. So I would probably fill in green right here. Someone said, Joe said that this is just as beautiful as you. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate that. I really do. Bianca always comes into the studio in such pretty attire and well put together. And so I agree. It is as pretty as you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I must admit, this is not how I look. <laughs> prior to coming in, but I do try to whip my best for you guys. So thank you, I really appreciate that. And I always try, sometimes it doesn't work out, I try to match the projects that I'm doing. So I tried to wear a pattern that was like really busy, kind of like the board. It's not necessarily. <laughs> There's a method to the madness. There's a, me 
There's a method to the madness. I did try. I didn't get that close, but I tried. Okay. Another thing that I like about the, um, the pattern is that even if you can't get the circle like perfectly filled in, maybe you like miss an edge or something, by the time you finish and you kind of stand back from it, you don't even notice little things like that mm -mm. because it's so detailed. Someone was saying that they're inspired to do one of these patterns all white oh, to make it look man. like a snowflake for the holidays. You know what? I thought about that. I was even going to suggest it for like July 4th um, using red, white, and blue on this star pattern here. I think that would look really nice as well, but definitely all white for winter. I think that would be so beautiful. You could hang them on your tree depending on how big your Christmas tree is. You could also do this on little wood rounds too Ooh. and make those into ornaments and you could paint uh, or do the dotting oh, yeah. tool to make uh, snowflakes like that too. That would be so cool. This would be great to sell at craft shows if you are you know, in the business to be able to sell your artwork. This is a really great um, option because people love looking at mandalas. Like, I think it's just very captivating. It's yeah. very attractive. That symmetry is just so appealing. And these patterns make it very easy for you. I agree. Something else that just crossed my mind was um, coasters. You could. You yeah. could do coasters. I think that would be really cool, too. All right. We have Someone said that they could do um, colors for every holiday. Yeah, I agree. You could knock all of those out in one day and be ready for the next four months, four <laughs> or five months. <laughs> that would be really fun. Okay, we have two more after this one. And we're actually going pretty quickly, guys. I think since this is my third one. So Billy is asking if this can be used on glass, and the answer is yes. It's a multi-surface acrylic paint that can be used on glass, ceramic, terracotta, wood, fabric. Um, you can do it on canvas. You can do it on a variety of surfaces. So um, perfect for glass ornaments for Christmas. Yeah, that would be really, really great. And Linda, again, is asking where these wooden patterns can be purchased, and they can be purchased on platonline.com, and a link for that is in the comments, and I'll go ahead and add that here. Wow, this is starting to look really, really nice. I think that green really brought it to life. Green and white, those green are just such white. bold colors on that flat back, black background. I agree. So I'm going to tell you guys some of the names of the paints that I have over here to my right. So I'm going to put this green down for just a second. And then I will start back with the green. And in the meantime, if there's anyone that has another color request, you can pick it out. So I have a Mesa Sunrise. That's beautiful. And then we have the Summer Sun. What else do we have that we are not currently using? We have red ribbon, and then we have black. I won't pull the black out. I don't think that this is the best project. No, for the black not this one. At the moment, but I do have this really nice beige color as well that could look nice with this pattern, and it is called Ancient Stone. So those are the additional colors. If anyone wants to see any of these, I definitely do not mind using them. Just let me know. And again, Ancient Stone. Summer Sun is the yellow. And then this orange one right here is Mesa Sunrise. So I'm going to go ahead and set these over to the right and finish off this last green one in the meantime. I don't know. I'm kind of shooting for that, that um, Ooh. coral color. Ooh, OK. I don't quite, re I, what was that name again, Bianca? The Mesa Sunrise. Mesa Sunrise. That, that's my vote, but we'll see okay. what everybody else is saying. Okay. I like that one too. I think that would go really nice with this green now that we have it on here. 
Deb said that this is her first time watching and they don't know if they could do that, but they're saying you're doing such a great job. You don't know if you could do this. This is so easy, guys. I am an expert crafter, but I am not an expert painter. So this was so easy for me. I promise you, you can do this. With the pattern already being there, it makes it super easy, super, super easy. It's definitely a helpful guide to have. So that is our green. We have another vote for Mesa Sunrise. Yay! Okay, so we will go with the Mesa Sunrise. And what I think I want to do is kind of go in this pattern right here. So I'm going to do, uh-oh, let's see. Is it going to come out? Let's unclog it just a little bit. Let's see. I'll hand this to Emily and let her un get it unclogged for just a second. In the meantime, let's see, I'm going to grab my white again. And I think I want to do these bigger circles in white. So we will come back, uh-oh, I squeezed out just a little bit too much. So that is what happens when you squeeze a little bit too much, guys. I'm actually glad that happened. So that is what happens when you squeeze a little bit too much. So we'll clean that one up really quickly. And this gives us the opportunity to show you what it's like when you do mess up and you use a baby wipe to clean it up. So you can see just how easy the cleanup is. So we will just slide that right across. And you see how easy that was, guys? It came right up. And if you hold it up, they can yeah. see just how yep. smooth that is. Yep, no mess. There weren't even any streaks left. Yep, so there we go. All right, so while we are waiting on that mess of sunrise, I think I'm gonna go back in with our Whisper White. And I think I'm gonna do just a few accent bubbles right here and then we'll come back with that orange all right and again if you are just jumping on i do want to say again that you do not want to squeeze a lot you want to squeeze just a little bit in the middle and then you want to use your tip to swirl it around and while you are swirling you do not want to continue to keep squeezing your bottle. You only want to squeeze one time in the middle, unless you absolutely have to, but you shouldn't have to. Alrighty. So we are working our way towards the middle, you guys. Like I said, we are going pretty quickly. This is not hard, it's very relaxing. I found it to be therapeutic. And I just had a really fun time doing this. I think tonight I'm actually going to sit down, turn on a good show, maybe even just some music, and just maybe spend an hour doing this. I think this is a great way to end a long day. Especially after a stressful week yes. or, a, you know, you got something going on and you need to detach. This yeah. is the craft project for you. Absolutely. All right. So we will finish these few white dots off and then we're going to go back in with our Mesa color. So here we are right here. All right. There we go. Do we have any new people in that didn't tell us where they're watching from yet? Oh, well, we will have to wait and see. I saw a yeah. North Carolina one Ooh. earlier. Okay. Let's see, there are any other people I didn't, uh, we've got someone from Seattle, Washington, Ooh. Illinois, Illinois. Okay. a lot of people tuning in and watching you for some relaxing afternoon crafting. And you know what, I think it's even relaxing to watch someone else do this. Mm -hmm. It's almost like ASMR but visual. All right, so we have our mess of sunrise right here, guys. We will go ahead and go in with this color. Okay. We have someone from Puerto Rico tuning oh, in. Oh, wow, that is so cool. Welcome. Thank you for watching. 
Hinesville, Georgia. We've got someone from Alabama and Florida. Welcome, guys. Connecticut. Oh, they're all chiming in now. Welcome, everybody. Some of these places I have not been to. I've definitely been to Puerto Rico. I don't think I've been to Connecticut. Welcome, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. Billy said, absolutely, just watching is therapy. Yes, I definitely believe that. I think I could sit and watch someone do this. She might be tuning back in and watching it later. <laughs> Maybe you could even mute my voice and then... Um, just put on some music on in the some background. Music, yep, mm -hmm. and just watch it as I go. Yep. I think that would be really nice. I really love this orange. I love it right against the purple. Tamara says they're all just mesmerized. <laughs> I am too, guys. I can't wait to see this one come together. The ones I did are all kind of like soft and pastel colors. I haven't used the orange yet, so I cannot wait to see how this looks when we hold it up. And so for these, again, I am not squeezing the bottle. If anyone missed it earlier, for the really small dots, I am not squeezing the bottle. What I did first over here was squeeze just a little bit over here. And then whatever excess paint is left on the tip, I'm using that to just kind of tap. That way I don't over squeeze and leave a mess because now that our pattern is starting to fill in. If I do mess up, it's definitely not the end of the world, but because some of our other bubbles are filled in, if I was to go in and wipe, I do risk the chance of kind of messing up the ones that are already done. So it is very important to not squeeze too much, guys, just a little bit. And again, I do have to say, when you do get your paint on your surface, what you don't wanna do is when you tap your dot to pull it off to the side, you wanna pull up. So just remember to pull up and not out. Alrighty. Martha says, thank you both for your tutorial or craft-torial. Thank you, craft-torial, I like that word. Thank you, Martha, for watching. And thank you for missing that, for catching the missing bubble earlier. I know, they're keeping us on our, <laughs> on our toes. Martha, you must be an expert crafter. I would love to hear some of the things you're working on currently or something you finished recently. So Billy is uh, curious if they can get a closer look at the two pieces that you have in front of you oh, that yes. are completed. Absolutely. If you want to show that on the overhead so they can kind of yeah. see where you're going with this. Let's grab this one so this is the traditional mandala so this is that one and I kind of use mostly pastel colors here so this is the traditional one I'll go ahead and set this one off to the side and I'll show you guys the lotus pattern which is right here and this is that one, so you can kind of see the difference. So this is the one that I'm currently working on. So that's it right there. It's not done yet, but this is what it will look similar to when we are done. So those, But they'll both be different. They, they don't have to be, be the same. Nope. And I think that's what makes it mesmerizing, like especially if you do like multiple ones and have them in the same area with different colors. I think they all look really nice with all of the different colors. So those are the two that are off to the left side of me, and we will come back to these at the end. But we just wanted to show you guys what we are working towards. All right, so those are those two. We will finish off with our Mess of Sunrise. We'll probably even do a few more accent bubbles with this orange before we set it all the way down. There we go. So these are really tiny. So we are just tapping. Again, we are not squeezing. 
and after our orange if there was another color that you guys would like to see with this pattern just let me know and we'll go ahead and pull it out get it prepped and ready to go I think let's see what colors you have on there already I'll okay. try to get a close-up okay so You've used um, a teal, you've used yep. the purple, white, green, and pink. Now you're using the orange. Yep. So I think I wanna do these bubbles right here in the orange. Did you still have that second blue that you had I not do. used? I do, so Maybe what is that adding, one? Yeah. Okay, so next we'll use the breezy blue. This one is kinda like an aqua, aqua color. So we'll use that one next. After we finish with our mess of sunset, which is really, really pretty. Okay. And then after that, we have another uh, vote for a yellow. Ooh, okay. That's gonna be really pretty. All right. So we only have a few more of these left. All right. Like I said earlier, guys, I am not a painter. I cannot draw to save my life. <laughs> so if you are looking at me do this right now and you feel like this is something you cannot do, I promise you, you can. Me and you are in the same boat. And if I can do it, you definitely can. All right. Two more to go, and then we will switch out to our breezy blue. Alrighty, one more. All right, so I think that is it for the orange for now. I will not say this is the end of the orange, but we'll go ahead and switch out to a different color. Let's do our breezy blue. And I think I want to outline the next line of dots that's next to the orange with this breezy blue. I think that would be really pretty. So let's go ahead and do that. They are a little bit bigger than our, let's go just a little bit over here first. These dots are a little bit bigger than our orange was, so we will have to squeeze just a little, not a lot. So something I just thought of, the goal, when you're painting your dots, you kind of want them to look like little chocolate kisses. Oh! <laughs> so when you're pulling up your paint, and you see that little string, that's how you know you're doing it right. So just keep that in mind. You want your dots to look like little, these are not chocolate. <laughs> you kind of want them to like- that's kind of like the, the craft itself, you know, yeah. you- you it creates a point at the top but yep. then it will level out as yep. it dries yep yep even right now it will probably get even flatter i noticed that once um the other surfaces that i did dried all the way it kind of flattened all the way down but like but it wasn't said, runny no it, it stayed was, nope it wasn't runny and like I said, this dries fast anyways, but if you do want it to dry faster, I did use a blow dryer for mine and that just kind of helped it go even faster with the dry time. But no, it's not runny. And this takes quite a bit of time to um, complete. So I think like while you're working on your other rows, the other side is already dry. So that's probably why it's not runny, but I don't think it would be really runny anyways, even if that was not the case. So we will continue to go around here. So someone's asking if you need to seal this paint and the benefit about it being a multi-surface formula is that it comes with a built-in mm. sealer. So you do not have to seal it if you do not want to, but I mean, you're absolutely able mm. to uh, add an additional layer of protection on top if you want, but it is not necessary. Not at all. Okay. We have a lot of people saying that it's so pretty. Thank you. I love these colors. I love that orange suggestion, guys. That was a really good idea. We are 
almost towards the middle. We have some more votes for that yellow and green to come back. Okay, so we will go with the yellow next, and then we'll go back in with the green. I like that suggestion. Okay, so let's flip this around one more time and then I think we will be almost done with our breezy blue here and then the name of our yellow is the summer sun so we'll go back in with that one next all right almost there guys tapping lightly again not too much pressure on your squeeze, especially as you begin to fill in your design. You wanna to try to be careful that way. If you do have to wipe up, you don't have to wipe anywhere near your other dots that are already painted and dried. All right, pulling up. All right. So I think we will go ahead and switch out to our yellow color. Let's make sure that it's all of our dots. I know they're gonna come <laughs> for you. <laughs> they're gonna hold us accountable. Okay, so we will go ahead and switch out to our yellow color, you guys. Let's squeeze a little bit out over here. So I will always suggest kind of like squeezing out just a little bit first because if your bottle is clogged, you know when you squeeze a paint bottle when it's clogged and it just kind of like squirts out? You don't want that to happen on your pretty design. So just squeeze a little bit out onto like some scrap paper first and then go in and paint on your plaque. So let's see. I think I will do the yellow right under our line of breezy blue. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, I love that. That looks really good on camera. The colors are so vibrant. They are vibrant. I love this. Especially against that flat black. black. Yeah. I think it's just such a great way to showcase the wonderful contrast with the satin formula. Yeah. And I think if you were to do a white surface, um, it would show darker I colors. Mean, yeah, with the darker really colors, nice. it would yeah. look great too. I would love to see that black used on something. Mm -hmm. That would be really, really nice. Oh yeah, I love this yellow. It's very vibrant. All right. I love it. I would love to hear with you what you guys are working on right now. If anyone is working on some type of painting project and how you think you could incorporate this into that or anything that you have coming up. If you guys weren't in earlier and you didn't give any suggestions on what you could use this for, for any other creative projects, I would love to hear it. I think earlier we suggested things like table runners, Christmas, Christmas ornaments. I think I suggested tote bags as well. You can do mugs, you can do cups. Someone suggested doing a laptop lid. That would be really, really cool. You could do Emily. your phone case. Oh, phone cases. Now that's a new one. We did not say that one earlier. So Don is asking again how many colors there are, and there's 20 individual colors. They go from brights and bolds to pastels to neutrals, and then we also have a six-piece kit that you can also purchase on platonline.com. And so there's just so many bright and vibrant colors to choose from, and really the options are endless, because even if you use the same, like, five colors, no two projects are gonna look the same. No, not at all. Not at all. Especially if you're using the two different patterns. And some, uh, Dawn is also saying that they wanted to use them for some decorative stepping stones and this would be yeah. perfect. I think I suggested, suggest, not stepping. suggested, but I said this is what that kind of reminded, reminded me of. Reminded you of, yeah. yeah so y'all are on the same page. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, Anne wants to do wood earrings. Oh, wow. That would be fun. You're giving Bianca all these that ideas. That would be so fun. Wow, earrings. Wow, my mind never ventured to jewelry. That would be beautiful. I would love to see that. That would be really, really nice. So now I'm thinking clothes. Yeah, it's multi-surface. The back of a jean jacket would be nice. Oh, I love that idea. <laughs> That would be very In summer, nice. you could do a jean vest. Ooh. You know, you just, you cut the arms off and then you could do a pattern on the back oh, too, so you're not so hot. So cool. I love designing my own jean jackets. So I think, I think I'm definitely gonna try that. Okay, so we have a few more dots left with our yellow for this line of dots at least. I think I'm gonna do I think I'm going to do this, this row that's kind of like right underneath our orange here. And then I'll go back to our color request for anyone new or anyone that has not had a chance to pick out a color yet. I can call them back out for you again. I'll set this yellow down for just a second. Let's pull our colors back out again. If anyone wants to see the Whisper White, the Pink Nectar, let's see. We also have our Grassy Meadow and our Hushed Violet. And then we have the Ancient Stone, which is a really pretty color as well. It's almost like a beige color here. And then we did just finish using these two, but we can definitely use them again if if you would like to see it, we have the babbling brook and then we have the breezy blue. Billy wants to see green in the center. Ooh, okay. Let me finish with the yellow Billy and then we will go in with our grassy meadow. So let's finish off our yellow here. He's like me, I like to see the green in the center of things. For some reason, it just makes sense to me. It's like the middle of a flower, even though the middle must of a flower. be contagious. You're <laughs> you're trying to let your um, you know your crafting <laughs> senses. Yes, even though I don't think the middle of flowers are necessarily green. Often think of their leaves as yeah, maybe that's what it is. And on the bottom, like if you turn the flower on the other side, the center is green where the okay. stem goes down. Okay, so I'm not crazy. Great. <laughs> Okay, so we will go in with our grassy meadow. And like he said, we will go ahead and we'll do the center. Let's squeeze just a little bit over here first. All right. And then we'll try to find some other centers that we can try to paint. All right. So that is the center center. Let's see. Let's do, we're getting towards the middle here. Okay, let's do. You could do in between the orange dots. In between the orange dots, like right here? I mean, sure. I okay. mean, it, you can really go anywhere. Okay, let's do, let's do these. Let's go around our white dots. Our bigger white dots. That's pretty. So Kelly is asking if this paint can also be used uh, for writing, and the answer is yes. It has an awesome script point, and you can do lettering with it. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be really, really, really nice. Very, very nice. And if you feel like you don't have the best handwriting, I feel like you could probably use a stencil. You, yeah, and yeah. you could put it down with chalk first, yeah. Yeah. and then you can follow the chalk line, and then as yeah. soon as your um, paint has cured, you can go and you can rinse it off with water. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, if you didn't catch it earlier, this dries pretty quickly. So you don't have to wait hours. 
for this to dry or anything. Honestly, 30 minutes or less. And I think it's good to go. And if you need it to move a little more quickly than that, you can definitely use a blow dryer. With my blow dryer, I think this thing was dried in like four minutes. It was really, really quick. All right. So now we are getting to the really detailed part, which is the center. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very fun. I enjoy doing the really detailed part. Because this is the part where it starts to come all the way together. So it's really exciting. But you, because you can kind of see the end result. Almost. Not quite, but almost. Okay. Oh, this is so pretty. I love it. Okay. So you guys can kind of see the pattern I'm going in. I'm trying to go around the... The circles that they are look like little leaves. Yeah, that are going around our two dots that are covered in white. They kind of look like snowmen. They do. Yeah, so I'm trying to. Um, you know, I'd love to see uh, some more of that pink and purple brought into Ooh, the center. Okay. Okay. So we will go back in with our pink and purple when we finish with our grassy meadow here. Yeah, I think that pink is going to be very, very nice. All right. We have one more snowman to go. We have used a lot of holiday terminology here. <laughs> We've given out a lot of holiday ideas. So Tamara is uh, picking on you a little bit uh, again, saying that there's a yellow dot in the center. Uh -oh. Do you see... Do you see a the yellow dot in the center? Oh, I I think I do see it. Where it was in between the two yellow dots. You could go in and create oh, that. Oh, I see it. You see it? I you, see it. So what you could do, um, what they were asking is if you could layer on top of that with a different color later. Ooh, or okay. you could you could go in and put yellow on the other dots in that circle. Got so, it. And I think she means this one right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that idea. So when this dries a little bit, we'll go ahead and we'll go back in and we'll add in colors in between it and then colors on top of it as well to see what that looks like. So for now, while that's drying just a little bit, we'll go back in with our pink nectar and then we'll do a little bit more of our violet color. Oh, Tamara says she's not picking on you. She was, <laughs> that, that was me I, that I was picking on you. No, guys, help us. Help us. Because this is so detailed. Like we said earlier, you can really kind of get lost and you won't even notice that certain things aren't painted until after the fact. All right. So we squeeze a little bit of our pink over here. Let's swipe it off really quickly. Okay. So I think what I want to do with the pink is now go around the green leaves that we just did because i always think pink and green look really nice next to each other so let's do that and you guys will definitely have to help me here because this is definitely the part i think at this point you just kind of <laughs> just free free flow free flow <laughs> this, this is why she chose to go from the outside in because yeah. she knew that if, if the outside was good as soon as it gets on the inside you can yep. just use your interpretation yeah because this is the part where you kind of start to get to get lost in it but like she said i think no matter what you use or what pattern you go in it will still really look really really good okay and then once we finish with our pink, we will go back with our violet color. Okay. Let's flip this around here. And y'all are getting a deep dive into folk art dots today. Bianca's yes, taking no are. shortcut. She's doing the whole thing with you. Yes, guys, this was fun. This would be like a fun timed challenge, actually. This would be a fun game with your friends. To like turn it would be great for girls' night. You could all get yeah. a surface. 
and you can put on some relaxing music, yeah. chit chat, catch up and just really enjoy the process. I definitely thought about that. This would be great for a girls night or even a family night. Your kids could do this. Yeah. And there's no way to like really mess up because you don't have to go in the patterns that I'm going in. I just really like to color block, but you could do whatever and it would still look really, really nice. All right, let's flip this around here. We'll add some more around our green leaves. Right here. And then, like I said, we will go back in with our violet color. And then we are close to the end, guys. Thank you for everybody that's hung in there with us so far. You got to see it from the beginning to the end. We did it together, guys. So Martha says that it definitely looks beautiful, but it would be hard for them to keep track of the dots I'm using which color on. <laughs> so do you have any tips and tricks on how you're able to keep your you know, pattern in mind? To keep my pattern in mind, I think that's kind of why I start from the outside because I feel like it's easier to keep up with the pattern because the middle of it is so detailed. If you were to start from the middle, I think you would get kind of lost. So starting from the outside, if you just work your way in a layer at a time, maybe not even spread out. So maybe if you start with your first line and then you go to the second line and then the third line, I feel like that's the easiest way to kind of keep up with your colors as far as your pattern goes. But, um, to be honest, even if you did not go in a pattern, I still think it would look nice simply because the design is already laid out for you. I think no matter what color you use, I think it's going to turn out beautiful no matter which way you yeah, do Yeah, I, I think that this is really, you can't go wrong yeah. with it. It is a, I agree. It just turn off the, the thinking cap and yep. just really let your creativity shine and yeah. autopilot. Like that's what I do when I do mandala. Mm. I just really feel like I'm not worried. I don't want to worry about it. Yeah. I agree. And we don't want you to worry about it either, <laughs> Martha. Yeah. But if you did worry about it, <laughs> I would definitely say work your way from the outside in. And you can always take breaks too. Yeah. You don't have to do this all in one sitting. Absolutely. Absolutely, I agree with that. But you might get so zoned out and so mesmerized, you might just wanna push it all the way through, but you definitely do not have to. Billy said that they questioned starting from the outside at first, but now they understand. Yeah. Now you kinda understand, yeah. I feel like it's easier if you're gonna do color blocking. I feel like it's easier. Or you could just select three different colors yep. and limit your color palette and then go from there and then it really doesn't matter. Yep, it does not matter. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back out to our purple and I think I'm going to come back to the middle because what I don't wanna do is use this right next to our pink because it might look a little similar and I wanna add a little bit of contrast. So I think I'm gonna come back to the middle and add in purple right underneath our yellow ring here. And then I think the color after this that I would like to use is white. I think I want to come back in with the white, white will definitely be a bold and contrasting yep. color. I think so as well. And so I know we talked about kind of filling in these bubbles in between the yellow here earlier. So I think and the yellow should be dry enough that you can yeah. go back over that other dot. And that's something to keep in mind is that if you do mess up and put a dot where you don't want it, mm -hmm. you can always wait for it to dry yeah. and put a color on top. Yeah. You are It's not a commitment. Yep. So let's do that now. So we have a yellow here. I'm going to go ahead and add some purple on top of it and it covered it up perfectly. 
Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So let's see, is there anywhere else that I want to add this purple before we totally finish? I do not think so. I think I'm done with purple. I think I really, really want to go back in with this white and use that to finish off everything. Maybe not everything, but most of it to really, really, really make it pop and outline everything. Uh -oh, I got a little bit on my finger here. Let's get that off. Baby wipes on hand. Baby wipes on hand, guys. These are very helpful. I always keep a crafting cart next to my crafting desk, and it has scissors, glue gun, baby wipes, Q-tips, all of the things that you need when you mess up. <laughs> okay, so let's go in with our white. I think I'm gonna do the rest of our dots here in white, guys. Let's see, let's see where my heart leads me. Okay. I don't think you can go wrong. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that looks really nice. All right. All right, it's really starting to come together, guys. It is mesmerizing. When I look up at the camera, it looks really great. You did that. Thank you. And you guys can do this too. Whoever said they think they can't do it, this you is can the easiest beginner craft that you can do. It really is, guys. I challenge you to actually go get this and try this at home. If you guys try this at home, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram. I am at, I am Bianca Octavia, and also tag Plaid as well. We would love to see if you guys try this at home. I really just want to hear your success story. <laughs> And I would love to see the pictures as well. I would love to see what colors you chose to go with. So uh, for sharing the work, you can use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge or hashtag Plaid Crafts. Okay. So you can definitely go there and, um, and post your work and Bianca and I can find it and yeah. be able to give you a big thumbs up and congratulate you on trying something new and letting your dot mojo flow <laughs> as uh, Martha says so a lot of fun okay so I see I see some other dots that I want to correct so we'll show you another example of that so right here where I have these two pink dots I'm gonna cover them up in white not that it really matters but she has an idea of where she wants her colors now. Yeah. It's making so, a little more sense. All right, so there we go. We fixed that one. And then we'll do this one here. All righty. And we just want to say thank you to everybody for your color selections yeah. and letting us know where you were from and, you know, having a little bit of fun banter while Bianca was crafting today. Yes, thank you guys for tuning in. And thank you guys for hanging in there. We are, I think we are 98% of the way done, guys. I think we only have a few more bubbles to go. And then I'm going to show you how you can turn this into a hanging plaque or wall art if you want this to hang in your home. So we, we do have one more request before you fill in okay. the center. Uh, Billy is wondering if you could please add the babbling brook around the green in the center. Around the green. Oh, okay, perfect. Babbling brook. I think that one was the lighter color. Oh, no, that's the darker one. Okay. I can definitely do that. Thank you for all of your color suggestions, Billy. Anne says, thank you for the demo. Jennifer says, beautiful work. Thank, thank you for hanging you. with us. We've got some fans in here. So. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. This was really fun. This was really, really fun. Okay. If you guys see any bubbles that are not done, of course, the ones right around the green, but if there are any ones that you see that I Nobody missed. is picking on you anymore. <laughs> no, it's not picking on me. You're helping me. You'll see what I mean when you try this at home. You're going to be like, wow, I didn't even see that. Okay. So this is our last round of paint, guys. This is our babbling brook. And then we will be done. 
This was really fun. All right. That is it, you guys. That is our Lotus Mandela. That is so pretty, you guys. I, I love it. This. I, I love it. too. So before I show you the, well, how to turn this into a hanging sign, I will go back over our colors just one more time. One more time, just so you guys can know. So we used the pink nectar. We used the grassy meadow. We also used the summer sun. We used breezy blue. And then the last color we just used was the babbling brook. We also have the mess of sunrise. And then we also used whisper white. So these are all of the colors that you see here on our plaque right now. And I'm going to go ahead and set this all to the side. I'll show it to you one more time. We did this together, you guys. Thank you so, so much for picking out all of these really pretty colors. I love it. I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side and show you how you can turn this into some hanging art at home. So when you are done, super easy and super simple. Let's grab this out of the way as well really quick so we don't mess up our new sign. So all you want to do is flip your wooden plaque over to the back. And then you're going to grab some rope, which I have right here. And then you're going to grab a staple gun. And you're just going to staple it onto the back. Of course, however long you want it to be, you can adjust the rope or the string. And you're just going to simply staple this onto the back. And that is it. So we will just kind of twist this and staple this down just so it stays in place. All righty. We'll do this one too. And you flip it over and it looks like this, you guys. And you can hang this. This is so lightweight. You don't even have to put a screw in the wall. Of course you can. But I just used a regular thumbtack, and I'll hang this up from the front view as well, just so you guys can see it. And it looks like this. So these are our mandala wooden plaques, guys. And again, this was our folk art dot paint. I had a lot of fun with you guys. You can find all of these products on Plaid's website. You can order them and they'll be shipped to you. And like I said, we would love to see what you guys come up with at home. Emily will tell you again one more time what hashtags you can use if you would like for us to see it and give you a thumbs up on your projects. Yeah, so if you would like to share your work with us, you can use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge or hashtag Plaid Crafts. And you can also go to our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook page and be able to share your work there. And until next time, we really hope that you had a lot of fun learning about folk art dots. And we're so thankful to have Bianca here in the studio hey today. Guys. Thank you guys. I had a lot of fun with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your color suggestions. I had a lot of fun with you guys, and I will see you guys next time. Again, you can find me on Instagram at I am Bianca Octavia.